How does Leslie hope you're well? In this video, I'm going to show you a little charting trick, a little strategy I'm going to show you on how to find the key support level. It's really simple. Join me. All right, guys, welcome back. Let me just tell you where I am. I'm in this very old and quaint little hotel in Inverness in uh, Scotland. And I think it was built back in the 19th century. Let me just show you. It's quite interesting before I talk about the charts. And uh, I've just been quiet here, so... All right, let's go out here. This is the, um, this is the main exit. And as you can see, it's very old. And uh, let's just go out over here. All right, guys, welcome back. So let me talk to you now about this charting technique that I was going to show you. So essentially, this is a very useful uh, charting technique that I find, uh, or a little charting trick, whatever you want to call it. And essentially, the reason why I apply it is because a key level on the charts called the 200 moving average. By the way, you can use this also for other moving averages too. For example, the 100 EMA, the 144 SMA, whatever moving average you like. But actually, I prefer to apply it mostly to the long term moving averages, like the 200 moving average, like 200 SMA, for example, the green line, for example, you see on my chart. But yes, you could also apply this to other long term moving averages, too. But essentially, the reason why I apply this, I'm just giving you an example. Imagine the chart, whatever you're looking at, could be Bitcoin, could be stock markets, really whatever price action you're looking at is in an uptrend. So the price has been rallying higher. And let's say you're expecting a correction. Let's say you're expecting a retracement, a drop in the price. And as I'm sure you know, one key level on the chart is the 200 moving average and indeed the 100 moving average as well. So the 100 EMA and the 200 SMA typically are strong levels of support because usually in a correction, a retracement, price tends to, when it pulls back to these levels, usually it tends to hold them. Not always, but usually you see price trying to find support or trying to find a floor near those levels, the 200 SMA or the 100 EMA. Now, I primarily use this technique that I'm going to show you to the 200 moving average. I'll explain the reason for you in a few moments, but essentially the way it works like this. So let's say the price is above the 200 moving average and you're expecting the price to pull back, have a correction, potentially towards the 200 moving average. But here's the thing, as I'm sure you know, it's called a moving average because essentially it's moving with the price. OK, so where the 200 moving average is today is not where it's going to be in a few days or weeks or months. OK, so because these moving averages are moving with the price, you know, they're not static, they're dynamic, they're moving. So how can you know where the 200 moving average support is going to be in a few weeks or months time? So here's a very simple technique I'm going to show you. All you have to do is go on the chart so you can just grab a trend line. So this is what I usually do. Just grab a trend line on the chart and then apply it. Basically, what you have to do is just superimpose that trend line on the 200 moving average for the last several bars. What I would do is I would simply superimpose that trend line and the very recent action on the 200 moving average, whatever moving average you're using. So in other words, just draw that trend line, superimpose that in the same direction that 200 moving average is going. So for example, if the 200 moving average is moving up at an angle, you just put your trend line at the same angle, directly superimposing it on that 200 moving average, on the most recent action, the most recent action, the 200 moving average. And that actually draws for you a projection. And what you're doing essentially is you're extending that 200 moving average forward. You're projecting it forward, okay? So you can then easily spot where that 200 moving average is likely to be in the next few weeks or months, as you can see here. So now, when you look at the chart, if you're expecting a correction on the price, if you're expecting a retracement or drop in the price action, now you can know with some probability where that 200 moving average is likely to be, let's say, in the next few weeks or months. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, well, the 200 moving average could change direction in the next few weeks and months. That's true. You're right. But the thing is, because the 200 moving average is rather slow, it's a very slow moving average, it's less likely to change direction very quickly. That's why I like to apply this particular technique primarily to the long term moving averages like the 200 average, because the direction changes very slowly. You can apply this to other moving averages, too like the 100 EMA or the 144 SMA, but I like to use it mostly for the 200 average. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to apply this to short term moving averages like the 8 EMA, the 21 EMA or things like that, because those moving averages are short term and they change direction very quickly. So again, the purpose behind this technique is to find where support is likely to be 
at some point in the future simply because those moving averages will be in a different location. So we can then find where the likely support is at some point in the near future in the next few weeks and months. All right, guys, hope this video helps. Thanks very much indeed. Bye for now.